So I'm just going to say at the moment, I'm a little sniffly. I do not have coronavirus, <laughs> no coronavirus here, but there's a lot of flowers with pollen. <laughs> um, so forgive me if I'm a little sniffly. I'm, you know, the downside of paradise, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said like it's not coronavirus. <laughs> it's like we all have to start saying that. I know. <laughs> um, so before we start, since we have a little time, I have to show off something I bought today. I was going to wear it, but then the screen's only doing here up. So I bought this beautiful. Oh my god. peacock capelet and the back is the back of the peacock oh that's to die for it took one artist like if you guys want to know why am i here in mexico <laughs> I, and i gotta say people are always saying oh you're going to mexico oh no it's so unsafe it, it's like well yeah if you're in areas where there's lots and lots of rich people that or near the borders or the tourist towns and you know in any country that's where you'll get cartel but we're like in this beautiful historic city on the on the top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere this city is ancient like the buildings that we walk past were built in like 1300 1400 and it's filled with artists and shamans so like there's there's no cartel here. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Shake up the artist? Beautiful historic top of them. Oh, hold on. For some reason. No, it's not you, it's me. It's me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, so you're fine. This beautiful hand-painted beaded work of art took one artist a month to create. A whole month. I'll tell you what I paid That's for it because it's like, um, for some reason. No, it's not you. It's me. Oh my! Stop it! I You're know. I'm. Out. I think. I'm I think I'm apporting myself. Am I in <laughs> multiple locations at once? Am, am I dimension hopping again? How many timelines am I in right now? <laughs> and that they're. Um, it was designed for someone with a slightly larger bosom, so they're tailoring it. But I got this cute mini skirt. It's suede. And my mom and I were um, invited to a fashion show next week. Oh. So every day I'm walking like close to 10 miles so I can look good in that mini skirt and take <laughs> uh in one week <laughs> get yourself a get yourself a mexican boo mm -hmm. a, little, a little latino lover <laughs> oh yeah that is gorgeous. Uh, oh i just wanted to tell you because um you know you said that there is some man with an exotic accent <gasps> so you're gonna crack up because uh <laughs> here's what happened one um oh my god an artist friend and I are writing a book together that's very muy caliente and very You're making my armpit sweat. Oh my God, I remember that prediction. All right. So ever since she and I started working together, men have been hitting on me. It is so funny because like, keep in mind, it's been five years since I've even had a date. And it's been 10 years since any man has asked me on a date. Like, my whole life, guys have always thought of me as one of the guys. They do not think of me as someone they want to date. Or once they look at my website and see my YouTube videos, they don't want to go anywhere near me. So suddenly guys are hitting on me. But, you know, I'm nothing that's tempted me. But one guy with a very cool Irish accent, and I got very close, but for professional. I was ready to offer up more. I put on this sexy dress. <laughs> And he got very excited and introduced me to professional cohorts that now we're going to do a project together. So I thought Uma would appreciate this. I'm so excited. 
the exact man. And he was very excited about the work I did with autistic youth. So <laughs> that's hilarious. That is so hilarious. Yeah. 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 I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have people online with us. Hi, everyone. Um, Uma, I've been chatting a bit. Do you want to start about why we're here? What called called you uh, to this? Well, I called you. <laughs> yeah, you, you called me. And um, it's interesting because Benita and I, it's really cool when you connect with somebody in the metaphysical community, because even though we're all doing the same work, we are not all always in alignment or synchronicity. So when I find someone that's in synchronicity with me, I get very excited because I know spirit's not just speaking to me alone. I know that spirit's speaking to many of us. So to find like what I like to call my community, you get very, very excited. Interestingly enough, Benita and I started getting messages last year. Um, and Benita will talk about her messages she got. I'll talk about mine. And then we're also going to do a bit of channeling tonight to talk about what else we see coming for this year. Um, I've invited in my people, you know, to help me with that, to bring through, because I've been getting like Benita hit me up earlier this week and she's like, I'm getting so many messages. I was like, me too, me too. I did a channeling session on a Wednesday for a client and so many messages came through. So we're just very excited to share it with you. The first thing I'm going to tell you right off the bat is that the messages that we have to bring are going to be serious in nature but remember we are not here for panic we're here for planning okay and i always believe that the best defense is lots of information so to me if you can at least have an expectation of what's to come it can lessen that fear that anxiety that panic because you're like okay the the oracles have been seeing this because benita is an oracle i'm an oracle and I also want to do a little bit of a talk, if Benita would let me, if we have time for it, about how oracles are being treated in this day and age, because it, it's um, it's ridiculous. It really is. And um, yeah, that's that's why we're here for tonight. And I hope that you guys make this a conversation and not just have me and Benita talk back and forth, that mm -hmm. you guys pose questions, your concerns, your comments, and we will share with you what was downloaded. So. Uh, do you want me to start, Benita, about what I received last year, or do you want to start? Um, you go ahead and start, and then I'll jump in. Okay. Yeah, you start, and then I'll go in. Got it. Okay. So last year's summer, I was... Uma? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you froze. We heard last year in the summer. Oh yeah, I can see my face frozen. <laughs> That's kind of weird. You know, the energy. Yeah. Get your energy in alignment, girl. You know, it always that always happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I always do. I always freeze. I think it's just so much energy coming through. Let's see how this. Oh yeah, works there you are. You're back. <laughs> okay. So um, last year's summer, I I was given a lot of messages. Uh, but what was interesting was they didn't tell me why to do the things they told me to do. They just told me to do the things. And because I've been working with spirit. Mm -hmm. Uma? 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 <sighs> okay. Well, Uma has, has frozen on us. <laughs> And um, those of you who have been around, either of us know, sometimes electronics have trouble with us, um, have trouble with our energy. So um, I will go ahead and share my bit while Uma gets in alignment or back online. Um, and I would not surprised when a year ago um, or last summer when Uma started coming forward. Here she is! Yay! Hi! <laughs> I always do this. I'm so sorry, guys. Anytime I, like, when I start bringing in the channeling, it just always starts. Okay. So keep it 3D for the moment. Tell, tell spirits to, like, okay. take a step back. <laughs> Okay. 
All right. I'm telling them to just lower the vibration because this always happens <laughs> yeah. and I'm like in my zone. So I don't even know I'm frozen. Yeah. So all we got is started to be Uma. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were looking up at them and I thought you froze again. Um, uh, okay. So I'm going to stay again? here. Yeah. I'm going to start over. I'm going to stay here on zoom with you and you just tell me what's going on on Facebook for now, because there's so much energy coming in. So let's do that. Let's stay okay. here. Let me stay with Benita. Okay. So I'm going to start from the beginning. I apologize, guys. I have, I'm not as good as Benita. I don't know how to manage this with this electronically. I can manage this with this in person, but I haven't learned how to do this. It just, it just takes a practice. Remember, I blew up a lot of electronics before I start got it like. Yeah, and I don't want to blow this laptop up because I just I blew up the last one. So <laughs> Mo modern world problems for channelers. Okay. So what I wanted to tell you guys is that in summer last year, I received a lot of messages. And what spirit spirit didn't tell me specifically what was going to happen. And I know why they did that, because if they did that, I was going to freak out. All of me was going to panic. Um, I have high anxiety. So they told me things and like, I have people who can verify, like Benita can verify some things that I've said, but in mm -hmm. summer, they told me, the first thing they told me was to take my business online. And I was like, why I'm doing well at Lotus. I'm thriving. And they said, we want you to take your business online. And as of January this year, I was 70% online. I was moving in that direction, but because of the situation that we have now, I am now 95% online. The only things that I do in person now are things that have to be done in person. Like if I have to teach a Reiki IT bars class that require touch, those are in person, but everything else has pretty much gone online. So that was the first message I got. And in summer last year, I was beginning to tell my partner, Rob, something's coming up in 2020. I just feel it. It don't feel good. I don't know why. And if you look at me and Rob, our schedule, we're always traveling like every month or every other month. You guys see us on planes all the time. But I actually told Rob last summer, I said, I feel we need to be grounded for 2020. That was the second message I got, not to travel. And in fact, this year, we only have uh, one trip planned, which is the big summer trip with my family to go to France in July. If that still happens, I actually think it will happen because of the yeah. messages I've received this week. So that was the only trip we had planned. We canceled all our other trips. So that was the second message I got to stay local, <coughs> um, in 2020. The third message I got was to actually downsize Lotus. And that's what you guys saw. I had two suites. I had a team of Lotus members. Um, I was given the message. It's time to let that go to just have one suite, very small. And uh, the message again was, you're not going to be here much. You're going to be online more. So that was the third message. The fourth message I got last year was to... Um, the fourth message I got, what was the fourth message? I, I wrote all this down. I forgot. I forgot. But I'll tell you, I'm going to hold off on the fourth message. Oh, the fourth message was about spending time with your loved ones. Mm -hmm. I got a fourth message last year and I've been kind of disconnected from like my mom, my dad, my brothers, just because of, we all live around the globe. Um, some in South America, some in Florida, some in England, Canada, all over the place. And the message I got was you need to, to reach out and get in contact with them because it, it feels like there's going to be a shrinking of the globe, if you will. So all those messages I got last year, I shared with people like um, Rob, Benita and myself, we were talking in December with another speaker and we were planning an event for March. And Benita remembers me telling her, I see a black cloud hanging over March, like, let's not do it. And I don't think it's going to go off. And now we know why. But the interesting yeah. thing I'll tell you is that the way my seership works is they don't tell me why. And I know why, because I, I'm going to freak out. I'm just and like you guys. We don't need to know why. They just 
Yeah. You know, like you don't need to know why uh, leave, you know, a pebble got in your shoe. There's a pebble in your shoe and they are saying you're going to have a pebble in your shoe. You know. And that's the thing, because I always distinguish, I'm not a prophet, I'm a seer, because prophets will be able to give you that direct, this is coming, the plague, whatever, it's coming, and um, they can tell you why stuff is going to happen. I only get visions to prepare people. So actually, we are now, today is March 13th, um, Friday the 13th, and two weeks ago, I got messages to stock up on food for a month. And I did. I called all my close friends, family, um, my partner, and I told everyone, I, I got a message and I'm going to do it for me. And I just want you guys to do it for you. Put gas in your car, um, have cash at home, stock up on food. And they're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Is, is, you know, our country shutting down? And I said, no, 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 no panic. It's just be prepared to have stuff at home. And this was before it even came to the U.S. This was when we first, first heard of it in China. And nobody was making a big deal about it at that point. There was just kind of like, oh, this is what's happening in China. And even before we started talking about production shutting down, like way before all of that, when there was no care and concern, I was given the message to stock up in food. And then I was also given the message to start going online even more rapidly. They were like, you need to go online. You need to go online. So those were the messages I were given. And I have more messages for you later about what's next. And I'm going to wait in that because I want Benita to talk about the messages that she was given last year. Right. So um, some of you know about the first time I channeled Jesus, which was, I think, December 1st, 2017. And, um, you know, and I spoke about that earlier this week, so I'm not going to get too into detail. But at that time, the librarians, the Akashic librarians really wanted to speak through me to let all of the healers and the light bringers know what we can do in our daily lives. Like even if in your daily life, you don't see another person, what can you do to bring healing energy um, to our planet? And, and so they were talking about repairing the global mandalas and I and mean, they talked about a bunch of stuff. I, I never posted that part on my YouTube, even though, as you guys know, most of my live stuff ends up there, just because um, most there were people in the room that I have a lot of respect for who were very angry. There was one person, it's been confirmed, one person was so angry, this person was getting ready to hit me because I was the body that the words were coming through that this person found so offensive. Um, and all this person found offensive was, Earth has its life path, just as each of us has our life paths. Every living being has a life path that is planned out before one comes into life. It's the same with our planet. And, it is time for Earth to go ahead to the next stage of its life path, whether we're ready for it or not. The librarians were saying, just like, I'm not sure if you can hear the birds around me. There's so many birds here and beautiful sunset getting ready to happen soon. So just like when we go forward and you hit a challenge and you can either go through it with grace and love and learn your lessons more easily and get to the other side, or you can get stuck in it and have a lot of issues and repeat the pain and the trauma over and over till you figure out how to get out. So what they were trying to do was, was explain to us how we as healers and light bringers can help the planet get through this more quickly and easily instead of the hard way. And they described the hard way and apparently humanity has chosen the hard way. The hard way. <laughs> it is human nature, though. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Jesus came through to show how one can heal just through intention. Um, and um, so at that point, there are visions of future Earth, of my life in particular, and of our planet's life that I've had since I was a child. 
I had growing up, I thought everyone could close their eyes, get calm and let visions of future earth come to them. So I was, oh, like in my late forties, early fifties, before I learned that other people don't do that. Uh, some of you do, which is awesome, keep on. But uh, there were visions of the trauma and the breakdown of society in earth that the librarians described would happen. And I always see it like I see Earth's life path ahead of me and I see the timeline. It's like I'm walking a literal timeline and I can see the past behind me and I can go anywhere there. I can see the future ahead of me. I can go there. And just like when you are doing a past life regression, I can sort of go around and see what's going on. I can step into uh, the most I've done is up to eight alternative timelines to see what's going on there. Um, and sometimes it gets a little confusing for me. <laughs> as, uh, as, as it should. <laughs> yeah. But um, Monday morning, I woke up and I'm in meditation and I saw the future traumatic timeline but it was in a circle around me. Like I was in a round room with big screens and all the future stuff I saw was happening all around me. And I was seeing like near future stuff. They were showing me like the next year. And I was like, oh, oh no, that's now. <laughs> and they told me to call Uma. Uh, and Uma was having comparable messages so we were doing that great thing, you know, where you start a sentence and the other person finishes it. And you're like, you know, could, we were confirming that we had um, the same or similar enough visions that they all fit in together. Well, I just uh, want to add to that a little bit because I literally just woke up from the most amazing dream of all those messages. And Bonita called me right at that time. So I thought that was just amazing, her timing. And she's done that twice to me before where it's just like just the right timing and she's really being guided so i just had to add to that yeah when they say call uma now when i call uma now it's the right time to call uma um so we were able to fill in certain details for each other um things that i from my background in uh prof prior professional background, which again, I went into in my prior live stream, so I don't want to waste time now, uh, gives, gave me a lot of general based knowledge on um, how viral and bacterial, how infectious diseases grow and evolve. Um, so you can't really rely on the news right now because the amount of cases that of coronavirus that are being claimed is only a small portion of the amount that's out there. Um, and as Uma mentioned, when we talked about this, everyone says, oh, but it's only the people who are at risk. Well, those of us who are spending our lives exhausted, stressed out, maybe not always the healthiest diet, self-abuse as a driving mechanism to accomplish a great daily to-do list, we're the at-risk uh, community yeah. just because of that. So it's important to remember that this is definitely a time to allow love to flow through you and to treat yourself really, really well. Um, so visions that I've had are hardcore. Um, and I'm not saying what I'm about to say is the truth, but I started getting visions um, a year ago when I was in Mexico, actually. Uh, when I came back from Mexico, my energy had shifted and I became more of the seer energy. Um, and people who came to me for past life readings, it was before a year ago, people would come in like, oh, I just wanna know who I was or, but after a year ago, it was almost completely, what is my purpose on this planet? Why am I here? What do I need to accomplish with my life? You know, it's a very different frequency. And I think part of that is my frequency had shifted. It's actually been 
more difficult for me to get into alignment to do past life readings. Um, I've been doing a lot more life path readings, but part of that is the messages I'm getting are about all of our planet and interdimensional and like seeing uh, what's happening in what we call the war between good and evil among light beings and in other dimensions. They call it the reclamation that those that everyone was born in love and because everyone has free will, some have gone away from love. Now is the time when everyone is being called back to love. Yes. So instead of our thought of battling demons with swords and whatever, no, it's you touch them, fill them with love. They return to who they were. One moment. Are you heading out? Okay. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I think it's going to be like this for a couple of hours. Uh, we're, we're going out to a concert in the, oh, that's okay, mom. People can see you. Hi, Erzy. <laughs> mom, say, come wave hi to everyone. She doesn't want to. <laughs> She's <laughs> ready to go out. Um, but we're going out to a, a concert in the park after the live stream. Oh, with puppets. Aww. Some of them are going to be like 20 foot tall puppets and some will be small puppets. Mexican, Mexican creative puppets. Love it. So anyway, um, what was I saying? Sorry, I got distracted. Um, the visions that I've been getting, oh, oh, so they're reclaiming. Like if you can, like I myself have been going off when, when I leave my body, going off to like realms where demons are and just like touching them with love. And suddenly they're like, oh, thanks. I forgot who I was. They become light beings and go back to their spirit families. And they know it's the reclamation time. It's not the way it used to be where they're like, I'm so embarrassed, you know, will my soul family even want me? They're like, oh, good, good, good. Reclamation time, good to get back to where we belong. So it's happening here on earth now but because we are 3D dense energy, the reclamation is going to be really different. Um, I know there's a lot of people on earth who are like people who haven't reincarnated in a long time. They've sort of gone above that. They're like lower level ascended master level are back in life now. A lot of um, people are not human in origin. Um, there's a lot of people who are having near death situations like our beloved Uma, who um, either another being comes and shares space with the body. So you are yourself and a light self with you, supporting you, or um, an alien or another life form you're like, okay, good, I'm done with this life. I'm giving you the body now while I go back to my soul. Or um, in my case, my higher self, my soul and my original soul are now in my body with me. So I'm like the total me, all of my past lives, all of my future lives, my entire soul is in here with me. Um, so, People are no longer quite people, but um, what they show me is there are, there's a project with nine planets, and they've been showing me this for a long time, and these nine planets are in different dimensions, different frequencies, but each one needs to hit its state of peak elevation where all the beings in the planet become a collective. And at that point, when all the nine planets are, it becomes a portal so that non-physical beings can be comfortably, say, here on Earth. And where we can go to other dimensions, where anyone can go into any dimension or any frequency while still being their complete self. And um, we're the second densest planet of the nine. So it's taking a long time. It's a lot more challenging for us than the others. Um, but six of the nine are ready. And when humans become a collective, we will each be our individual, but we will also have 
the ability to be one with everyone. But you never lose your individual self and you get to have your individual life, but you also are connected with everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so since we chose the hard path, the librarians I spent all week up there, they're like, a lot of people have to die, governments have to crumble, all the things you guys created and claim is real, it's gonna dissolve and fall away and you will have to return to true reality, acknowledging what's truly real. Then everyone will reconnect with the earth and become a collective. This is freaking me out because Benita and I did <laughs> not talk beforehand. No, we haven't of, talked at all about this. What we were going to say, and we have the same messages. We have the same, oh my God, I'm getting chills. I, I'm getting chills. Yes. Tell me when you're complete because I got to jump in and, and start saying Yeah, okay, I'm done. Jump in. <laughs> I, um, whoa, whoa, Benita. We got the same <laughs> messages. So, you know, it's always nice when you say freaky stuff and other people go, oh, yes, that's real. Thank it's you. <laughs> so real. So let me tell you what was shared with me this week. I had a channeling session on Wednesday for a student. Um, cause I do private mentorship one-on-one with people just like this on zoom and she oh, no. wanted to learn. Yeah. Like, you're, you're in and out <laughs> ground girl ground. <laughs> you know, you know, what was funny is when you said that, uh, the walk, like the walk-ins, the entities, you know, with the near death, I felt since my dear near death experience that I have an entity with me all mm-hmm. the time. It's a walk-in. Yeah. I have a walk-in and I'm not dismissing them because I'm really enjoying the information I've been receiving. So I apologize again, guys. I'm going to bring it down. (laughs) Bring it down. Okay. Uh, I'm getting excited because all all the messages Benita just shared was, it was great because I had a private student. I was mentoring her on Wednesday for channeling, um, helping her, teaching her how to channel. And after her session, I said, I'm going to channel for you and show you like what this looks like. So I started channeling and usually, which is interesting, usually I don't remember the full message and I still don't, but I remember this time, I remember snippets of it because it was so important. And the snippets of the message that came through on Wednesday was that, um, the, first of all, the virus is not here to hurt you. Okay. Um, it might kill you, but it won't it's not here to hurt. Yeah. I've tapped into the, the Spanish flu, you know, that uh-huh. killed 50 million people. That mm-hmm. was a virus sent here to kill. Right. This is not that kind of virus. And in fact, the elders told me you asked for this. And I said, who me, Uma? And they said, no, you, the planet asked for this. And I said, what do you mean we asked for this? And the elders said, didn't you guys want more love and compassion in your community. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. And they said, well, isn't that what's happening now? Neighbors checking on neighbors, people offering to help other people, uh, your government offering to help you financially and healthcare wise. And then the the channeled message I had with my student on um, Wednesday, what came through was that when you look at the bees, they have a hierarchy that works. You have a queen bee, you have worker bees, there's the hive. The worker bees efficiently work because they have trust in that leadership, in that queen bee. And that's why the hive works. On the planet, we have many worker bees masquerading as queen bees. And what spirit told me was it's time for those fake and artificial queen bees to be removed from power. So you can take that how you will. You can take that as in healthcare, as in government, as in local community, but it's really a wiping out of the fake bees and the moving to power and the promoting of the real queen bees to lead us and to lead by example so that we have trust and faith um, in something that stands for integrity and honesty. The other message I got was um, in alignment with what Benita is saying, because that was about the government and the power. And we're seeing like, we're going to start seeing a lot of removal, you know, Um, either by natural or unnatural means, we're going to see removal. The other message I got 
was about that we did really ask for this in that we wanted to be a closer community. We wanted to go back to basics. A lot of people on the planet wanted to go back to natural wellness and to not have to depend and rely so heavily on artificial drugs um, and chemicals that hurt our bodies. Mm -hmm. Because you got to understand, guys, when you attend a class, whether it's a self-love class or a drumming circle, all these classes you guys have been attending, you, what have you been doing? You have been connecting your mind, your body, your soul. And those connections didn't just happen for a night and went away. They started to form and they started to integrate into the collective consciousness. So now we have all this energy that's saying, come back to me, come back home. And that's what we're putting out into the universe. So when you look at now, the whole world is temporarily on a sleep, on a relax, on a retreat, right? What are we doing now? We're cleaning everything. You know, one thing, Benita, that used to really, you know, I always say I don't have OCD. I'm not OCD. I would never say that and disparage what real people with OCD have. But I say sometimes I'm like it in terms of my cleanliness and my sanitation. And I just get really freaked out about things. And I used to remember a time when I would travel as a child and people would come off a plane and they would take a good hour cleaning that plane. And we had to sit and wait. Do you guys remember that? And we had to yep. wait before we got on the plane. And it always used to disturb me that as soon as people came off, literally we're getting right back on. Yep. And I stopped looking in, you know, those little pockets on the airplanes where you can put things because there would be gum wrappers in there and just stuff in there would freak me out. And I said, these planes aren't being cleaned well. And it's the same thing with subways and everywhere. It just wasn't being cleaned well. The relief my heart is getting that now everywhere, restaurants, you know, um, public transportation, everywhere is getting a good cleaning down. And I'm like, this is what we've needed for so long. So yeah. that was one of the messages I got. Go ahead, Benita. No, I was, um, um, honestly, you cracked me up a little bit when you talked about that is when I was, um, you know, a kid, I spent a lot of time on a farm in Maine that had, it was a Quaker farm. There was no running water, no electricity. Like it was old school farm and it was a, a boarding school that my parents sent me to. So I wouldn't be a spoiled McLean brat which I was kind of becoming. Um, and so, you know, we're like sitting in the dirt. We're playing with goats. We're swimming with pigs. Like we're mixing manure, aged manure with our soil. Like this, this is what most city people would consider very dirty. Yeah. And um, so my uh, teachers came down to DC to visit us. And um, I took them the, to the Smithsonian and they were walking around going, it's so dirty here. Look at all the dirt, everything's covered with grime. It's so filthy. And they're like, everyone's covering up their dirt with all this deodorant and perfume. It smells like a whorehouse in here. <laughs> we were, they said the Smithsonian smelled like a whorehouse. A whorehouse. <laughs> like, now these are people who knew the difference between like pigeon manure, chicken manure by the smell, <laughs> you know, like they had a keen sense of smell, <laughs> but I, I took them into Washington DC and they were grossed out. They couldn't get away fast enough. They said the whole place was filthy and the people were filthy and covered with like, they were just grossed out. They couldn't wait to get back to what they called their good, clean soil. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's so, a cleansing of the planet. And that's, that's the way I've been looking at it is it's a necessary cleansing of the planet. We have had from dirt and grime, the actual 3D level of it to the other level of it, dirt and grime in terms of corruption mm -hmm. and manipulation. There's a lot of cleansing going on right now. So when we get mad or we get sad, what we're doing is, is we're not giving mother earth her right. We've done so much things to mother earth and yet she's taken it. So when she's doing her thing, we now have to be respectful in that aspect and say, all right, 
she, but again, the virus, cause somebody asked on, on the, um, on the thing, they said, uh, can you channel uh, coronavirus? And I said, no, I can't channel COVID. I just tapped into it. Like anybody can, all of you can tap into COVID. And what I sensed when I tapped into it was that it was not a virus here to kill. It was not here to kill. Um, well, it was here, here to, to cleanse. It was here to cleanse. It was here to cleanse because when you look at what has been done in the wake of COVID, we've had cities cleaning supplies. We've had um, government uh, companies allowing people to telework, which we've been fighting for for so long. There's yeah. no reason people have to work this hard. So now all of us have been given a mandatory vacation, if you will, children and adults, because we work too damn hard. This is not yeah. what life was meant to be. So what I'm trying to tell my people is don't resist it. What you resist persists. Lean into it. Accept that this is here. My children are now home till April 14th. I'm not going to lie to you. I was prepared. Today they had homework, you know, they, and I'm going to post it just now because they had to do um, a report on the aloe vera plant and the snake plant because I have them in my house. And I'm like, I want you to write a report on it. And they, they wrapped it. So it's going to be cute. So the thing is, it's like, I have been preparing for this. And what I'm trying to tell you guys is all of you are intuitive. Mm -hmm. You can quite as easily tap into this the way me and Benita have, you know, what's the difference between you guys and us? We create time every day to tap in. Mm -hmm. Well, some of our friends watching also do that. And sure. that's why they want advice from us. But yes, 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 indeed. And you know what? Um, also, Nazi, in your question, can you channel Corona, which I'm the one who like puts it a ha ha. I, I just like to me, that's like a Saturday Night Live sketch waiting to happen. <laughs> I know. But um. <laughs> Uvanoska, the great medium, will channel the coronavirus and it comes through. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, Nazi, you are a prana shakti practitioner and you are an extremely talented prana shakti practitioner. So you can see the coronavirus on any level you wish, but bring in the prana shakti and send it out. Here's the thing, when I look at, we're kind of skirting around, I'm like Uma said, it's here to cleanse, but not necessarily cleanse, like now all of humanity gets to come together in a nice clean way. We all know there's enough resources right here and now on our planet for every person to live well. But, you know, they say the upper 1%, the upper 10%, whatever, there is no need for the suffering and torment that's happening right now. This is a reality that we humans have allowed to happen. Yes. Either people created it by purpose or the rest of us figured it's a reality, so we go along with it. But those of you who take my spoon bending class know that we can define reality to be what we want it to be. So. If you are a healer, start defining the reality as you want, where all everyone has all the joyous and healthful abundance they need. Start with yourself, of course, and your family and your loved ones, because that gives you a powerful center of energy to spread out. But few welcome right now. All the more we light bringers and healers bring out, bring divine through us and out the quicker our planet will get better. And if it's only a small amount of us, it will still have an effect. But the more we go out, the more and more and more, the more effect we will be able to have with less effort. And also, even if it's just a small amount of us, the more we do it, the more practice we get with it, the more experienced and skilled, and then we can send it out greater healing with less effort, even from individuals. When I see the most likely future, I see one year from now, at least a quarter of the planet's population will not be alive because we're resisting, we're wallowing. We're like, no, we don't, you know, and I mean, not us, humans. Humans have become like, 
the fleas on a dog and we've overpopulated. So now the dog needs to scratch and, you know, have a flea bath. So this coronavirus, which as quickly as they are mapping it, it is evolving. Like I predicted it a week ago and it's, you know, a lot of governments are in denial about it, but there are numerous people who have strains of coronavirus that are related to, but have different markers from the original strain. And that's a complete evolution in multiple directions in only, you know, a couple of months max. So, um, I, I think each and every one of you know the reality, but then fill yourself with the love. And like the librarians are pounding on me. Because mm-hmm, you know what you got to say. Okay. You know what you have to say. Okay. The Akashic Library is open to every one of us at any time. If you want to know what you can do best, go to the Akashic Library. And you guys know with Earth's frequencies shifting and with like, you guys, a lot of you know, oh, I've always been an intuitive medium, suddenly angels are coming in. Or, oh, I've always been, you know, an interdimensional healer and suddenly people who passed are coming in. Like we're all shifting we're all opening up in ways that we haven't before. The Akashic Library is connecting with all of us. So let yourself go into meditation. And what they're saying is, the truth you have the greatest resistance to, the message that you fight the most, is the one you should look at and pursue. Because that's the message that's most likely the real message. And Uh, if the message comes through, you are here to help heal the planet. You're like, oh, no, I need to be humble. Put down the false humility and go out and heal the planet. If they come through and say, you're not really human. You're actually a god from another dimension. It's time for you to reclaim your godhood then reclaim your godhood. So um, they're, they're, uh, oh my God, they're like splitting my head open. Well, I'll give you a, a break to let them not split your head open on Thank screen. <laughs> and I'm going to answer. Prem asked uh, if the coronavirus was man-made and I'll, I'll let Benita answer, but I'll tell you my take on it from what I tapped into. I know that there's a lot going around that this was created in a lab in Wuhan. And I have to tell you, I didn't get that feeling. What I felt was it was born. It was um, a mutation of other things. And it just, I I felt a birth, to be honest. Uh, This is comparable to AIDS and the string virus. People are running around murdering animals and then using their bodies in ways we should not. I mean, not us obviously, but us. Uh, Marburg began with bat feces, people using bat feces in ways they shouldn't, Uh, string viruses. Um, AIDS began with people using our primate cousins in ways they shouldn't. Um, And this is not about like, there's no racism here, trust me because no one knows which people were the first. The current coronavirus began with people killing snakes and using uh, their chemicals, uh, ingesting them in ways they shouldn't with the hope of having more viral penises. I mean, honestly, coronavirus was brought by male arrogance. And because, If you look, there's a lot of people on our planet who are clinging to the worst elements of the ceremonies of their belief and their culture, but they're not feeling the heart and the spirit and the love of it. And uh, so in uh, certain countries, they are butchering animals right and left to try to claim within them what love and meditation would give them. 
So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and mad cow disease again, you know, uh, there was, um, the one that came from people feed, I, I forget which one that one was, but it was when people were feeding chicken bone in like bird that. food for chickens. And then, uh, there was a virus from that, the mad cow disease comparable. So, while it is man-made in that we mess with nature, nature messes back with us, it was not made in China like that jackass Trump said, like in a laboratory. <laughs> You're gonna get shut down. Your internet is gonna get lost in a second. <laughs> you keep it up, you keep it up. <laughs> And then you're going to blame me for cutting out this time, but it's not me, not me and my little entity. <laughs> I am a being of love, but really. <laughs> but even, even, sure me, even 45 will take away that love from you. <laughs> he has that power to just, oh my gosh. Um, I want to read something to you guys because I know Benita and I are, are, are sharing a lot of very strong messages. And um, I agree. I have to say, before I read what I have to read for you, I will say that I do agree that there's going to be a lot more deaths. I felt that honestly, the weekend of Kobe Bryant, when yeah. Kobe Bryant passed, I said like, it was, it was like a vibrational sonic boom that just moved through the earth. That's what it felt like boom. And it just went through the earth. And I was like, oh, I was like, this is bigger than Kobe. And I said, but, and in my head, I, cause I'm a medium, I tapped in. Cause I wanted to know like, what was that about? And where I was taken to, uh, interestingly enough, and I haven't told anybody this, but my partner, what I saw was the helicopter going down. I saw it before they told us it was spiraling. I saw circles, like it was spiraling down and I saw him grab his daughter and he was holding on to her. And then I saw them on the other side and he was confused, but his daughter Gia was not she was just quite comfortable on the other side, but he was more confused. So something told me that he needed to be on that other side. And I was like, but why what's coming? And that's what sparked all of this. And, yeah. um, we are going to experience a lot of debts and a lot of us in this chat room right now are going to have people close to us pass. But here's what I want to tell you as a medium, even if at the time of death, there is confusion. No soul goes before it's time. So we as a soul know when it's our time to go. And then when we cross over, it's going to take some time adjusting. But at the moment of debt, we might be confused or we might feel angry or we might feel whatever. But in time, as we start to remember our soul plan, we, we make peace with that. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. The second thing from what I've heard from the elders is that the souls that are leaving the planet or choosing to leave the planet, going back to what Benita said about density, they're higher density and they're choosing not to up level. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's people who are not wanting this new way of life. Either they are stubborn, they're stuck to their old beliefs. They feel they're too old to change. They feel change is more burdensome than death. I don't know the reasons, but I will tell you that the yeah. message I got was that there were souls choosing to leave. So when you see this mass exodus that's about to happen, it happened in China already, it's going to happen in the US and probably for some of us, our elders, please be respectful to the people that are passing, right? Don't hold the government at fault or the healthcare system. Um, as you guys know, I had a near death experience about a month ago, a month and a half ago, and I was one of the souls choosing to leave as well, okay? I was choosing to leave because of what's coming to this planet the cleanse is going to be great the cleanse is going to first of all the cleanse is what we asked for we wanted more authenticity vulnerability rawness truth integrity loyalty love mm -hmm. but yet a lot of us are not set up for that so there's the shift and there's the catch 22 but i want to read something to you guys because i know all this stuff sounds doom and gloom but actually there's there's a lot of silver lining here and i want to share that with you you know, in 1918, we had the Spanish flu and it killed 50 million people. In 1957, we had the Asian flu and that killed 2 million people. In 2009, we had the swine flu and that killed 200,000 people. Do you notice the decrease in numbers? 
There is a decrease in numbers because we are becoming educated. We are becoming smarter. We're moving, we're shifting. So the one thing I want you to be aware of is that whatever toll this is going to take, it is not going to be ever like 1918 with the Spanish flu where 50 million people died, okay? It's going to be in smaller containments, but at the same time, understand that it's because we as a community, we have love. We have ascension. We have people like you guys that are ascending and doing your spiritual work and you're contributing to that, that elevation. All right. So I wanted to let Benita talk on that too. Um, you feel there's going to be more people passing. <laughs> well, the thing is like the vision that I have is basically, um, yeah, a lot of people dying, uh, governments crumbling, like, but it's only like when we come together in love, that's when the tide starts to turn. So the vision I'm seeing is more like, if people don't come together with love, it can go this far. And I hate to say this, but you know, you guys, I lived on mountains, I've built my own log cabin, I've plowed fields with a horse and a plow. Like, I know how to live like a, you know, 1860s mountain woman. So I'm comfortable with it going all the way in that direction. Although there is a lot, like now they show me, yeah, but what about this, 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 and that? You know, and of course we have the coronavirus is finally a big wake up call for our planet which we needed because we're doing squat about global climate change. And to be honest, I'm a little like distressed that when I get back from Mexico and I say, hi everyone, look at my beautiful tan. You guys will go, what do you mean? It's been like 67 degrees here all winter. We all have tans, but I mean, little joke there. But um, the vision I see is more extreme but love is what brings us forward. And um, you can't love where you don't love. I cannot love pretty much 98% of our politicians because I think they're horrible human beings. So I don't feel love for them. You can't force love, you can't fake love. Anyone who's been in a bad marriage knows that. But um, you can love where you can love. And you can send love to anyone you want. I can send all the love I want to fill the whole world. I'm very comfortable with doing that. I can fill Washington DC with my love. So I may not be loving on the people I don't love, but they're surrounded by my love and it hits them the same way the, the sun is hitting all of us in this unseasonable winter. The coronavirus is waking people up where the climate change was not. And the coronavirus is reminding people we have to make powerful shifts in our daily lives. Um, I like how you're talking about cl cleansing everything from the bacterial to the spiritual, to the mental, to the emotional. Um, is that's really what will get us through. And for all of us who are intuitive, work your intuitive skills. This is a great time to bring all of our non-physical friends in here. The Schumann resonance is like sky high. You know, everyone's, everyone's ready to come in and help us raise the frequency of planet Earth. And we're on planet Earth, we may as well accept their help. Yeah. So that, that's what I like the visions I have are more extreme than yours, but none of them are set in stone. Yeah. And that's the thing, because somebody asked on there, Diane said, is there a timeline for this cleansing to be complete? And for me, um, I don't know when the cleansing globally is going to be complete, but the message I've been given is for our area and my area being Manassas, Virginia, I felt that by May, this was going to wrap up. And that's just my feelings because I asked them, I said, should we cancel our, our trip in July? I'm more than happy to. My dad already has insurance. It's a whole family going. We can always cancel and go next year. 
And they said July should be fine because we, they said we are seeing to this that this ends by May. They, the thing is, is what I've been told is that they already know who they're coming for mm -hmm. and who the cleansing is going to happen to. So it's not like they're, you know, kind of like um, a survey poll, they're going around house to house and having to collect information. They already know based off of the energy, they already know who's going. Right. So it's just coming to collect is what yep. it is. So I feel uh, to your, to your question is that it will end by May. And I wanted to say something too about what Benita said about the politicians and not holding love for them. I agree with her because, but again, I'm not a narcissist at heart. I'm not a very loving person, but here's what I will tell you about the politicians. Um, the most important thing for me as a human being is to not judge people. Because if I judge people, then I take myself out of my divinity. So what I do is I have no, neither love nor hate for them. I just hold space and I have awareness of them. Um, but then I make fun of Donald Trump all the time. He's fun to make, <laughs> he's fun to make fun of because he's like, I always see like a three-year-old boy, you know, like I just can't help it. That's why I giggle when I see him because I just see this little three-year-old boy who has to get his way <laughs> and, um, it's cute. It's kind of cute. So with the politicians, um, you know, here's what I'm going to tell you about people in general and not just politicians. You have to understand that people are going to do what you already know them to do. So when you get mad or upset at people, you have to understand human nature is a very good divination tool. People are going to act in their human nature. And what is that? To survive and to get ahead and to make sure they're okay. At the core of it, even you sensitive empaths, most of us, if not all of us, are, have some sort of narcissism in us to survive. We will survive. So when you see people acting out of line out or whatever, you, if you start looking at people and understanding that they're going to do what they're going to do, you're not going to take it personally. You know, you're not going to take it personally. And, and that's just a trick that I've done over the years yeah. is people have, as Bonita have seen over the years, 11 years, happy anniversary to me, you know, today, <laughs> 11 years owning my metaphysical center. I've seen a lot of people do me dirty, but I don't get mad at them because it's in their nature to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly have interesting rumors come to me. I'm like, wow, thank you all for talking about me so much. That's a very strange rumor. And uh, I never would have thought to do this. But now that you put my the thought in my head, maybe, who knows? Um, yeah. yeah, people are saying, uh, let's, they, they're they saying in the comments, Benita, about we need a nationwide prayer gathering. Uh, let's start within our communities, cities, counties, states. And here's the funny thing. I'm going to say something that you guys are probably going to get mad at me about. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Here we go. I'm not necessarily praying for this to be over. Because it, Mother Nature, she has to do what she has to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to pray for this to be over or to save someone that needs to be saved um and then to delay the inevitable any longer does that make sense it's, people are gonna hate me for saying that it does us no good to pray for a specific desired effect because then we're trying to manage what is not ours to manage manage it does us good to bring love and prayer to the situation and invite those who know more than we do, like Gaia, to bring our love and use it. Um, for us to pray for this to be over, if it needs its life cycle to continue, then we're praying for a moot uh, expectation. For us to pray, dear Mother Earth, feel our love and send our love to those in need, that can have the effect. Yeah, um, Nancy said that she said, I just pray for the highest good for all concerned. And I like that. Nancy, you're very good. wise. Yeah. Yeah. I could do that too. Yeah. Um, it's us using our human brain thinking we can micromanage stuff that got us into this mess. So it's not the way that will get us out, but, um, certainly take care of yourself, send, you know, take care of those you love uh send energy of love 
I have canceled all of my public events. Everything's going online now uh, through my wellness center, my online wellness center. And I was telling Uma, it's so peculiar. And I'm glad that I do what I'm told from spirit without too much argument because they, I knew that we were going to go online. And then in December, they, I had this maniacal push to build an online school. Yes, we did. I was like a maniac working seven in the morning to 11 at night, five, six, seven days a week, just like building an online school that was far greater than the few programs I was running needed. Like I was building a whole institution for one active class. It was ridiculous. But now... Uh, uh, Benita, can you write that out? What you just said? Um, I was going to say no. <laughs> <just> channeling. <laughs> we can't ask us in five minutes what we just said. We're not going to remember. I don't know, but I can tell you. Um, I built the online school, and now it is ready for us to connect and have programs and be able to be safe while still connecting with each other and um uh specific oh 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 yeah uh so leah instead of doing a prayer for the effect that you conceive is the best you do a prayer of inviting all the sacred divine love from whoever you feel like connecting with to flow through you to uh, Mother Earth and ask her because she knows better than we do what needs to happen. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen yeah. And you know that. what? Yeah. I'm going to do, um, I'll check my schedule, but uh, next week I'll do a couple of prayer, uh, live stream prayer circles for that. Uh, so that we can all join in and you guys can see like how I do it. And, you know, um, who knows, we'll see. Well, maybe we can get various of us healers to show our different way of the same process. A lot of people in my group, in my camp at Lotus, we are going to be doing free Reiki healing circles. So look out for that this week. Look out for, I mean, we're just going to be doing a lot of free things. Um, I'm starting a goddess online circle for storytelling. So we're going to be doing a lot of things, not just for payment. Of course, we need payment to survive and to pay our bills, but we're going to be doing a lot of things online as well as more people go home and to go virtual. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to open it up for questions now. And while you guys think about your questions to type out to us, I'm just going to ask that you start by saying Benita or Uma, because we both can answer them and it's just going to cause confusion. So if you have a question, um, include the name of the person that you'd like to answer to or if you want both of us to answer, then just say that. Uh, and while you guys do that, I want to say something about what's interesting to me about oracles. Benita is an oracle. I'm an oracle. And what is an oracle? An oracle is someone who can see, who gets visions, and who, uh, because of their heart, they want to share those visions with the world. Okay? They want to help. What's interesting is from the beginning of time, oracles have always been respected. You know, they used to be the ones advising the king or the prince. They had their own temples. They had their own um, people respected them. And what's yeah. really interesting is just seeing the lack of respect for the oracles today. I don't know, like Sylvia Brown was an amazing oracle. She actually wrote about this happening in 2020. Mm -hmm. And she was outed in shame because she got a prediction wrong about one of the kidnapped girls uh, that was in that house in Maryland for like 20 years. And I, I personally believe that's what led to her death because her heart was so broken by this community that she served for so many years and them all turning on her because of that one prediction. And I don't know why she got that prediction wrong. I'm, I'm not going to venture to, to guess. The only thing I know is she was an amazing oracle. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that because I've been saying for a while about this and i've been trying to tell people and then when people turn to me now and say well uma why didn't you warn me and i'm like i've been talking i've been saying things but people haven't been listening so the yeah. one thing i want to say to all of you right now is buckle down make sure you have enough 
not too much. You don't need to last yourself two years, but if you have enough supplies and food for a month, go ahead and stock on that. And again, if you don't have like your favorite, I don't know, cheese and crackers or whatever, olives and whatever, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not like a spa occasion. It's just get enough and then also have the mindfulness to leave some back. Because I'll tell you something, a month ago when I was shopping and doing my, you know, my stuff, I ensured that I did not clean out any shelves. You know, I ensured that I left back because we have to take care of each other. Yeah. So yeah. this Oracle here is saying to you, we're not out of the thick of it yet. We're actually now at the tip of the iceberg. We're about to go in. Mm -hmm. You're going to start to see that from tonight to Monday, you're going to see a wide change. It's going to tr drop in here very quickly. And I want you guys to not panic and add to that fear mongering, but I want you to be prepared and to be safe and to be comfortable while this happens. All right. Exactly. Are there questions, Benita? You know what? I have something I wanted to add to that yes. um, because you're talking about oracles being shamed. Uh, we are in the threshold of the age of the divine feminine. Talk about reclamation. Um, and while here in Mexico, I've had uh, several occasions where I got to hang out with Delia. Um, oh, darn it. I'm spacing on her last name. Um, who wrote the book, Where the Crawdads Sing. Um, oh. yes, she is amazing. Like I can go on and on about how wonderful it is. So Delia and her, this is her fourth book she's written. She and her <laughs> wrote that book. What's that? She wrote that book. You need to buy a book and get her to autograph it from me because I want her autograph. I was like obsessed. She, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. such a fangirl. Anyway, yeah, fangirl. the first three books she wrote were, she's a scientist. She and her husband lived in the African bush for 25 years. And they wrote books on the research of studying the animals out there. They were the ones who discovered that uh, hyenas are not lone creatures, but actually lived in very uh, highly evolved societies. Um, and so I, um, she, there were, she said there were times when she and her husband lived in a space of Africa, the size of Ireland, where they were the only two humans, just wow. them and animals. Her stories are hair raising and brilliant. Um, so anyway, uh, I asked her, you know, what's her next book? And she said her next book is back to her turf of research. She said their entire professional lifetime of studying animal societies, all through uh, around the world, anytime there's animals that live in communities, they are matriarch driven. They are run by the eldest or the strongest female. And usually the males will be in the perimeter around safeguarding everyone and hoping to catch a female in heat while the females are running the core society. She said, humans have evolved to be the only group on our planet who are male dominated, that are a patriarch managed society. So the next book she's written, her fifth book is, and it's not published yet, it'll be out soon, is about that. Why have humans gone away from nature? And look at the trouble it got us. But this is the time of the rise of the divine feminine. So it's not a surprise it begins with a cleansing. <laughs> you know? It's not a surprise that it begins with a global healing and a reclamation. Um, so when we see, so I, I just wanted to mention that. Um, if I go any further, I'll start babbling. I just wanted to mention that because I find that incredibly relevant. Yeah. And I agree with you because I've been like last year, I held my first, not last year, 2018, I held my first ever global goddess summit where some women, some women and I went to Mount Shasta and we did ritual and ritual is a big part of my culture and my heritage. And I've been wanting to bring back the rituals and I, I'm starting them back up with the circles. But um, I agree with you a thousand percent. And Beth had a question for me. She said, Uma, what do you think people's focus should be during this time? 
meditation, personal insight, questions to ask, whatever, et cetera. Um, your focus should be looking at your household and trying to see it from the eyes of if we were to have a pandemic, a shutdown of country, a zombie invasion, will I be okay? It's not, it's not all the way on the, the left of doomsday preppers. It's not all the way on the right of YOLO, you only live once, it's in the middle. And what I said in my earlier broadcast today on my YouTube channel is we as a community, and I'm only speaking for America and Americans, we have this YOLO mentality and lifestyle, and we've gone so far right. Our parents had the wherewithal and sense to have like common sense items in the house. Like how many of you have a fire extinguisher in your house? How many of you have batteries changed in your fire alarms, your smoke alarms, your carbon monoxide alarms, right? Right how here. Many of you, yeah, good, because you're a good girl. <laughs> but how I'm many a of you? Single mom, that's why. <laughs> single mom, right here, all those things. Um, how many of you have like a sewing kit? Do you even know how to sew, right? So <laughs> it's where the focus should be right now is making yourself self reliant. We rely too much on takeout, on government, on other people to take care of us. And this is a gentle reminder that the power lies within you. So whatever you want to do right now is it should be proactive in terms of making yourself be okay. So that when these shakeups come, you don't get as anxious about it. You see, Benita talked about her living on a farm. I came from a third world country. We know how to use the outhouse, right? When people were running out of toilet paper, I'm like, well, what's the big deal? You go poop and then you could go in the shower. Like, it's just, you know, you wash. <laughs> it's, um, but I have a different mentality. And I also grew up in a country where there was um, raids and uh, dicta we had a dictator at one point with to line up for food. We have rolling blackouts where you had to go down into the yard. It's your garden. We call it a yard and take a shower in the garden, in the yard, you know, like, so I'm prepared for whatever come, come what may, like, we're going to be okay. That's where I think people right now should be focusing on is yeah. those classes, those books. Um, I started a herb garden for like eight, 10 years. And I always have like aloe vera plant is in my house. I have the snake plant. I already have things to purify the air and stuff like that. That's what you should be focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have any more questions? Well, I see Patricia Edwards um, can't please everyone. And usually those are fearful, always look to dissemble a person's gifts, reputation, and character. Look what happened to Jesus, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln. You are so right. But keep in mind, they brought a lot of light to our planet before they were executed. And their work has stuck so um you know i'll be honest with you i've had people try to take me out because they do not like the truth that i put out there i've i've had people turn on me um for the fact that i uh, stood up for our special needs community and uh, yeah it can be hard but you have to decide do you wish to speak your truth? Do you want to live your truth? Or do you want to hide and go undercover? Now, it doesn't mean everyone has to go out there as loud in public as, you know, Uma and I do. I do this because this is why I came to Earth. Yes, me too. Um, so therefore, what happens to me because of it is less, I mean. It is what it is. Hopefully my family wants me to be around for a long time. So I, you know, when people were threatening our lives, that's when I closed my wellness center and we went traveling and went online because I'm not going to stop speaking the truth, but I'm also not going to stay where people are stalking us and threatening my life and threatening my, my children's lives. Um, so, yeah. And I, uh, I want to add to that because that's such a true statement. Like you guys have no idea what we get put through. I mean, some <laughs> of you have seen like, like to me, like people leaving me a one-star review on Google and stuff, like that's nothing. I've had people <laughs> break my pipes. I've had people literally try to harm me and my children over the work that I do. So yep. 
Bonita is speaking truth here. You guys have no idea. You know, for you guys, it's just a free video on a Friday night. But you uh, have no idea. On. Have more respect for our people here. Because <laughs> I don't know what they're going through. And I know a few people here who have been put down when speaking their truth. And they're sure. here watching us because they're trying to learn how to speak their truth without being squashed. I think, yeah, for the most part, like I know like Beth Walgreen, Nancy I, uh, Wyatt, I know those, you know, no, those are powerful women that also understand what we've gone through. But what I'm really speaking to is not like shaming anybody, but I don't think people really know, Benita, that we do get threatened and we have to go through things. We've had stalkers. I still have stalkers that are unblocked, but somehow keep getting unblocked some, some way, somehow. So we, we have our, our issues, but the thing is, is we come out here in faith and courage because we believe in a higher purpose, you and, know? Yeah. And Nazi says we're going in and out. So that's also, <laughs> my temper got too big. That's why. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. You got to live your truth and you got to know who you can turn to, to support you with your truth. Um, Um and I spend a lot of time standing alone, speaking our truth. So we're going to get a lot at us. That's not necessary. You can stand with your group, hold hands and speak the truth to each other and let that truth go out there. It's not necessary to be abused in order to be honest. Um, it's not just a free video. Thank you, Milena. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. I mean, I love all of you. I see so much courage and perseverance among everyone who's here. Um, but I got to tell you, I know Um and I are both a little tired of getting kicked in the gut so much. And I think this is the time of the divine feminine. And when we're talking about reclamation, like here in Mexico, where I am in San Miguel, is the oldest discovered pyramid. So I'm not, I don't mean it's uh, the one that was first dug up. It was only recently dug up like a decade, of, no, like 2008, something like that. But it is the one that they count as the most long ago, the oldest way back. It was a temple for the divine feminine. Uh, wow. So yeah, and the ancient Egyptians, women were revered as goddesses. And so there was a time of divine feminine, and that was a time of great prosperity on our planet. I've been talking with anthropologists about this. And in the ancient, ancient, ancient forgotten civilization times, in the age of divine feminine in different civilizations around the world. And I'm not saying that was all at the same time, but there was prosperity in those lands. And then the divine masculine took over. It's kind of gone to garbage. The divine feminine were reclaiming. And I admire every one of you. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a woman in this life to be claiming the power of the divine feminine. Because we have genders. We have men and women. So we think of divine feminine as a female person and divine masculine as a man person. But when we're not in body, we're beings of light. Yet there's still what we call divine feminine, divine masculine. The divine feminine is about nurturing and the divine masculine is about protecting. Uh, think of, again, a herd of wild stallions, wild horses, mustangs. The females and the children, the young will all be together and the males will be circled around, the older males watching over. But the oldest and wisest Mustang is the one that dictates where they go and is the one that oversees the education of the younger horses and looks out for the well-being. And then the male stallions are the ones who make sure that it's safe where they go and that everyone is protected and cared for. That's the divine feminine, divine masculine. It's not gender connected. I want to say, yeah, I saw Teresa, Liz, Leah writing in, and um, I wanted to just say to you guys, I here's what I see coming out of this. Like when this finally clears and it's done, I see a huge shift in government. 
Yes. Like a really, like I see a lot of people being outed from government that were tyrannical. Mm -hmm. um, I see a four day work week. That is a prediction I have. I see a four day right. work week and I see um, a return to nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like you guys, some of you know, I do doTERRA essential oils because I started going back to herbs, oils, plant, plant magic. Um, mm -hmm. And I see the rise, uh, I agree with Benita about the rise of the divine feminine, but I also see the rise of the spiritual teachers again and the spiritual elders in the community because we've not really had that for a while because of religion, because of religion has turned us off so much of it. But there's going to be a return to having like each community having a spiritual leader. So good times are coming and I see it for all of us. I see a beautiful planet filled mm -hmm. with trees and moss and clean water. Um, and we're all going to see this in our lifetime before we go. So don't worry right. and say, oh, is that for my kids or my grandkids? No, I can see myself seeing it before I die. And I know the age I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this beautiful planet restored. And I, I just, I see wonderful things. So if you guys can, like, as Benita said beautifully, hold this energy of love for everything that is happening buy your supplies, practice social distancing, you know, do everything in respect and, and mindfulness. And we're going to get through this. I like, I said, for our area, I see this clearing by May. So we'll see. I see a little less, but then Uma always has more faith in people than I have. So, <laughs> that, so we see by the frequencies we can connect with. <laughs> Like, the here. librarians just asked me to tell all of you, they said, if you want that future earth, then manifest it. Now. Well, you saw that? You saw that? <laughs> yeah. That's what happens. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I've been here uh, five, six weeks. Not a single drop of rain, not a single lightning until then. The first That's one. so like, awesome. Okay, so they, they want me to say, remember how you manifest. You look at where you are, you look at where you want to be th there, you see it, you feel it, then you look at what you need to release, and then you bring that to here. So um, we'll also do some manifestations live streams so that, because yeah, you know, if we let's manifest it. If we don't want to be where everyone's dying, let's manifest the future earth and bring it to us now. I agree with that. But that's what the librarians are saying. They're laughing at us. If you don't want to be where you are, then bring where you want to you. So we're at the end of our transmission, and I want to give Benita and myself some time to tell you guys how you can get in contact with us what we have going on, not just in relation to this, but to what we're, what we are responding to the planet from the planetary call, what we're doing. So Benita, do you want to start and, and talk about what you're doing and well, where people can go? Um, as uh, the border between Mexico and U.S. may be shutting down, <laughs> I might just stay here in paradise. I don't know. Uh, Good. You totally should. Yeah. By, uh, my website bonitawoods.org and um, I will be doing some live streams on Facebook and I'll be offering classes on uh, on my online school through my website but I'm taking a little break from past life readings just because that's not the most, you know, they're pulling me into this whole other thing right now. And it's a little hard to like ping pong back and forth. Um, although sometimes I look, you know, like I've been chatting with people here in Mexico where there's a doorway between living and dead. They're all intermingled. I walk down the street and I see the spirits all around and yep. people here see them too. I'll say to someone, oh, I see, you know, this and look, oh, yeah, yeah, that one's been with me since I was a child. Like, so, um, so this is a, so I don't know where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be doing, but I'm always accessible through my website and we'll see what spirit decides is next for me. Um, I do want to make one mention, uh, Uma, you, you have doTERRA. 
I essential do. oils doTERRA are really good they're very and, good yeah and i've been using that what's that refresh is that the one what's the one that you gave me the lozenges for and the um breathe yeah breathe one thing i know is a good thing to do during times like this is set up a diffuser or a humidifier near your bed so that it blows moisture on your face while you're sleeping and put in essential oils that are good for immune system in there so the whole night you're sleeping your throat doesn't get dry you're breathing in moist air and you're breathing in healthful essential oils um and you know since uh, I know you can get some of this stuff at like Bed Bath & Beyond. Uma has good contact. I'm hoping that they get it through me and support my business. Well, I was about to say. Not um, Bed Bath & Beyond, who is doing fine right now. Yeah, but I was going to, well, I got to give all alternatives because it, it's a fine line between, um, I mean, honestly, right now we want to bring our community together. It's a fine line between fear-mongering and giving realistic information so we have a solid platform to grow through love. It's a fine line between taking advantage of a situation to self-promote and saying, come here, join me because we can be a community together. And I know you and I are community building, you yeah. know, and we want to help as many people as we can and we want to help people to help other people. But I always feel like I gotta let people know there's all kinds of options, but Uma is a great resource. She uh, gave me essential oils that were really helpful and lots of good information. So yeah, and I, I, I just wanna let you guys know, I was with other oils. I chose doTERRA. It wasn't like I was just this, like I chose it because of the vibration of the oils. And if you are a channeler, a healer, you understand what I'm saying about that. It all comes down to vibration and the other oils now burn my skin. Um, the oils that I used to be distributors for. So that's why I, I don't recommend things like by Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, just because uh, there's oh. tainted. No, I didn't mean the oils. I meant- Oh, diffuser. The, oh yeah, that's fine. The that's diffuser. Totally fine. That's fine. But yeah, the, the oils, oils have to be pure. Yeah, and uh, before I tell you guys about how to get in contact with me, I just wanna say about the oils. I know people are turned off about MLM and marketing and how it is done. I just want to let you guys know that every single person who signs up with me, you get a free one hour wellness essential oils 101 class. Like we sit down with you and go over a whole class, how to use oils, benefits, what the properties are of 10 oils that are popular. Like we actually sit and educate. And then after that, we put you in a bunch of different camps to continue furthering educating you. So we don't sell, we educate. I've been a teacher for 11 years it's not about selling it's about educating because like i said i want people to switch to this natural lifestyle um i will tell you guys i just put in the comment section a way to find out about my online classes like i said i've shifted 95 percent of my business online so if you want a reading a healing a spiritual assessment a mediumship read a channeling that can all be done online and you can just go to my website thelotusandthelight.com or if you want to find out about classes, because I'm offering a ton of classes online, again, people need to do their spiritual work, spiritual development. That's what me and Benita are here for. And it's meetup.com, the Lotus and the Light. So you can find out about any of those and just RSVP from there. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank Benita for this opportunity because, you know, she just, we plan things and we don't know why we plan things. Well, one, it's Friday the 13th, which is amazing. I love that date. And two... <laughs> Divine feminine power Friday yeah. the 13th. That's it's why they say ever. it's bad luck. It's like people try and squash female power. This is our day. It's our night. It totally is. And I started my business. Today's my anniversary 11 years ago on Friday the 13th. Oh, well, on March 13th. Um, I just love the number 13. So mm -hmm. thank you, Benita, for letting me. This was the best way for me to spend my anniversary is helping people sharing our love of knowledge and just doing what we love to do best which is bringing communities together right. so for those of you that really are into intimacy vulnerability and connection i want to tell you about something that i have coming up it's going to be on my meetup this year this month it's called it's going to be called a goddess circle and what we're going to do is we're going to tell our stories in that circle so for instance i might have like if benita came I might choose Benita because I'm going to go to where spirit drives me. And I might say, Benita, 
Uh, tell us a story, a personal story from your life, and it's focused on faith. And she'll have to craft a story from her, her life and share with us about her lessons on faith. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to be running it free. I just want us to get together and have these communities of talk and just sharing our souls a little bit because this is where the healing comes. So I hope you guys join me for that. That sounds awesome. I hope it is. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys so much. And um, uh, yeah, this next week, I'm going to be in the process of rewriting all of my coming events, move them to be online. Steve Herman is going to be teaching apportation and ectoplasm work online. Uh, we'll have Garrett Duncan teaching his featherweight shaman work online. It's raining. That's a funny first wow. time I've been here. There's been even a drop of rain. Uh, so I'm going to go before I and my laptop get wet. <laughs> Thank you, Benita. So you got to stop. You, everyone. Thank you, guys. All right. Have a wonderful night.